Hey, I'll see you in Rutherford, New Jersey, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Ontario, California, Davenport, Iowa, Las Vegas, Chicago, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. And we have a special guest with us today. Neil Oliver is a Scottish archaeologist, historian, broadcaster, and writer. He's perhaps best known for the award-winning documentary series Coast, as well as his two critically acclaimed landmark BBC history series, A History of Scotland and A History of Ancient Britain. He's written 14 books, presented 19 series for national broadcasters, recorded two major podcast series, hosts a live show on GBN News, and broadcast weekly on his online channel. Please welcome to the show, Neil Oliver. Hey, Neil. What an excellent introduction. Thank you very much, Jimmy Dore. Oh, well, you that know what? Fab. I, it's, it's really, I'm excited to have you on. We're all big fans of yours here. We uh, quote you often and show parts of your videos. So you're doing great work. And uh, I just wanted, I saw this. Uh, it says, Neil Oliver, it's going to get ugly. So um, yeah. tell me, what, what did you mean by that? Uh, the, I think... Uh, to try and be uh, positive and and looking to uh, you know maybe not today maybe not tomorrow but but sooner eventually uh, I, th I think the the troublemakers are going to fall uh, because what they're doing is a subversion of an inversion of everything that that life is properly all about uh, they are it's an anti-human agenda it subverts natural law apart from anything else. Uh, and, and on account of that, it, they will fall over. But when I say it's going to get ugly, you know, it's a predatory animal, um, like a wounded, whatever, tiger. And, and before it falls for the last time, it will lash out. And and I, I, I would predict uh, whatever, uh, a false flag event or events, I would, I would predict that things will get more spectacular. There'll be, there will be trouble ahead and, and ugliness. Uh, but 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 it's part of a kind of a, a necessary process. I don't know. It's like the pain of childbirth. Maybe you know. Maybe we've all got to go through this uh, pain until we get to the to the good part. So who who are the troublemakers in your view? Well, there's. I, I would say I subscribe to the to the notion that there's a, that there's a move to centralise power. Uh, I, I think by definition, if you know their names and have seen their faces then those people are middle management yep. at best um, and are essentially irrelevant. Just They're just irritant and annoying and, and getting getting the message out. But uh, when you say, who are they? They're, you know, they're, they're operating, they're operating out of sight. Maybe, maybe they have done for a, for a protracted period of time, but I think it's, I said, I talk to other people as well. You do too. I talk to you, talk to, you know, there's, there's others always. And, I think it's it's palpable that uh, that that centralising power has never been as exposed, uh, has never been as wounded, uh, arguably never been as frightened. I, I think a lot of their motivation comes from fear. I think what's being done, this attempt to take control of every aspect of everybody's lives and stop people moving around and stop people having freedom to speak and think, those are the responses that, that are driven by fear. I think we're ultimately dealing with frightened people uh, whose response... To, to assuage their own fear is to is to is to try and get everybody under the boot heel, um, and it. I think it's becoming more. I think it's becoming more and more obvious. Uh, but it'll they will go down. So I think what I hear you saying is, um, for instance, well, let me play you this video. So this is that mental case. <laughs> this little homunculus. <laughs> uh, uh, now I'm blanking. Is Huvel is his first name? Harar. Yuval Harar. Yeah, Harari. N Noah. I oh, think I'm it's sorry. You, Noah Yuval Har 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 Harari. So this guy is a at WEF uh, guy, and uh, he was been working with uh, Klaus Schwab, who's recently retired. And these are the people who want to re-engineer the whole world, and they're in pushing transhumanism. No uh, free will. That's no, the thing they love to bring right, up. No free will. You'll own nothing. You'll be happy, which is, uh, I think that's... I think Jimmy, that's what, what says, Stalin said. I think that's what Stalin said. But anyway, you uh, know what this guy said? He goes, he goes. What are rights? Are invisible? If you cut open a person, you do not, you do not see the rights. This, Did you do that, you've all? <laughs> yeah. So listen, I want to play this for you because I, you, uh, you know, I, I became uh, more aware of you 
when you spoke out against the COVID narrative, right? So there's only been a handful of people <laughs> with platforms that actually have pushed back against the COVID narrative. The COVID narrative, which, you know, uh, didn't only come from the United States, but it came from the WHO, the WF, the ha- Bill Gates, who basically runs the WHO because he's their biggest donor. And uh, so I want to play this for you. And this, is, this was chilling when I heard it. And I just want to get your response. COVID is critical because this is what convinces people to accept, to legitimize total biometric surveillance. Okay, so I don't know if you heard the first, his first word was COVID is critical. So I'll just start it again. COVID is critical because this is what convinces people to accept, to legitimize total biometric surveillance. If we want to stop this epidemic, we need not just to monitor people, we need to monitor what's happening under their skin, their body temperature. Like we, we walked in here, we had to go through a, a body temperature test. Now they're using it to see whether you have the coronavirus. But exactly the same technology can determine what you think about the government. You know, anger is a biological phenomena, just like disease. It's not some spiritual thing out there. It's a biological pattern in your body. With this kind of surveillance, I mean, you watch the uh, big president, the big leader, gives a speech on television. The television could be monitoring you and knowing whether you're angry or not, just by analyzing the cues, the biological cues coming from your body. Are you angry about what you hear? Are you frightened? Are you bored? This is the kind of power that Stalin didn't have. You know, when Stalin gave a speech, everybody, of course, clapped their hand and smiled. Now, how do you know what they really think about Stalin? It's very difficult. You can't have a KGB agent following everybody all the time. Even if, even if you do it, he's just watching your outside behavior. He doesn't really know what's happening in your mind. But in 10 years, the future Stalins of the 21st century, they could be watching the minds, the brains of all the population all the time. Okay, so this, uh, uh, ironically, was at the Democracy Forum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sponsored it would be, it? by the New York Times. So what is your, so th- this is what these people I've noticed have been pushing, and they, they, they're, they're giddy over what happened during COVID and vaccine passports and mandates. And what, what's your response to hearing him say that? I've watched. I've got a couple of his books on on my shelves. You know, I read some of his books before he came to this notoriety that he's had in more recent years through association with WEF and so on. But although, I mean, having said that, I'm not sure how long he's been associated with the WEF. I'm never quite clear when I listen to him whether I think he actually believes and subscribes to this stuff, yeah, same or thing whether is. he's just saying, or whether he's just saying what is possible. I don't know if he's an, necessarily an advocate of it or whether he's just a kind of a prophet saying that these things are coming. Uh, however, I don't doubt for a moment that what he is uh, declaring as possible and what he's saying is imminent it is truthful. I think these biometric and other means of monitoring people are definitely coming down the pipe at us. Uh, when it comes to, uh, it's interesting that you you know you you made you took care to point out that his opening word was COVID. I I increasingly s- subscribe now to the belief that that well that COVID was nothing new. I think it was a coronavirus, and I think it was uh, j- just a just a manifestation of uh, of a, of an in, of an infection that's that's probably been with us in the ecosystem for you know for for decades or or longer. I don't think it was anything new. And in any event, I don't think it matters whether it was anything new because when you look at the the data that comes out of say a European country like Germany, uh, you know, and we've all certainly been raised to think that that Germany is thorough. Germany is thorough when it comes to data analysis. They they were able to they've pinpointed that nothing clinically alarming was happening in 2019 2020 uh, but hospital bed occupancy was at a, was at a record low actually in 2019 and early 2020 uh, they, and they only started noticing anything troubling uh, later on when you know when the pro- products uh, uh, pushed as as vaccines which they aren't they're experimental gene therapies but uh, the, the situation started to change then, but people simply weren't dying of a pandemic in any meaningful sense. 
and that so I th- I think I think COVID was simply a an opportunity as you as you suggesting there. Uh, my wife actually has said for years that the election of Donald Trump in 2016 and the Brexit vote in the UK, the vote to leave the European Union, were two unscripted, unexpected events that slipped through, and that everything that's happened in America, around the world, certainly in Britain, in the, since 2016, has been a sustained punishment beating uh, yeah. to put the, to put the people back in their box. Uh, and and COVID, whatever COVID was, and I think if it was a pandemic of anything, it was a pandemic of dodgy misuse of PCR tests that were never supposed to be a diagnostic tool. They were a forensic bit of kit that the maker of, the designer of the PCR test said should never be used in that way. I think it was an endemic of you know nasal rape by the by the by the <laughs> by the by the by the, t- by the, t- by the testing. Uh, it, it was uh, it was a it was a propaganda of it was a, a pandemic of propaganda. Uh, I think, but to get back to what Noah Harari is saying, I think it's that is what that is what a, a, a sliver of the elite would imagine that they would like to see how they would like to see the world being run. But it's absurd. It's a perversion of the natural order. It's absolutely ridiculous. I think they can fantasize about these things to their heart's content, but in my heart, I, I do not accept that that any of that needs to come to pass if enough people simply say. Don't be ridiculous, and that's the most <laughs> polite language that you could possibly use in that context. And I think what's interesting as well is I believe we've entered some kind of what are you going to do about it anyway phase of our yep. uncivilization. That the 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 baddies, the elites, whoever the centralizing powers, they know the mask has slipped. They know that we know, but they've realized, or it seems plain to them, that it doesn't matter. Because they've got all the stuff anyway. They've got all the money. They've got all the guns. They've got all the drones. They've got all the technology. And I think it's dawned on enough of them that, oh, you know what? It doesn't matter if they know. What are they going to do about it? Uh, but I think the, but the reality is it does matter. And it's very, very simple in essence that when 8 billion people are aware, and you only need a small percentage, a tiny percentage of that 8 billion people to just say no and mean it, uh, and t- to declare that the the future that's being envisioned by these people and whatever Harari is, whether he's a prophet or a spokesman or a or, or whether he's warning us, I don't know. But it doesn't have to be like that. So, uh, Kurt, do you want to yeah. say something? So, whenever you see this guy talking, and we watch the one with the mind reading ear earbuds for your boss to make sure you're paying attention at work, all WEF, and they always do this thing, and I always notice where you're like, wait, are you for or against this? Yeah, yeah, but. That's the trick. It's like the like they already stole your watch. All this technology's been out for 30 years. <laughs> They're just testing how much they can be open about they have this stuff. And then they always do the same trick. They go, well, it's here, so we got to have a discussion about it. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, wait, so you're for or again? They're like, yeah, no, I know. It's really scary. But, we like, got, but are you against it? <laughs> they won't. We got they got always it. Keep, and it's, it's already here. They already have this stuff. They had it. All the tech is like 30 years behind what these assholes have. So they're... They're, that's what they're doing is probing to see where everybody's at with the plan. I think you're right yeah. about the unscripted thing, throwing the whole thing off. I, I've never seen. I mean, it looks like sheer panic from two events. So yeah, and, go ahead. And it's all fear. It's all fear. Everything manifests as fear. Our headlines are full again, but here in the UK, uh, 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 you know, predicting one frightening event after another. And the the daddy of all fears, obviously, is nuclear Armageddon, and they're dangling that over everybody's heads at the moment. Um, but I don't buy it because you know uh, these these people want to continue with their cosseted special lives, and they're not going to they're not going to ever unleash anything that's been you know gain of function made lethal because they're ultimately breathing the same air and so are their children and their grandchildren. Uh, neither are they going to have you know global Armageddon because they don't want their windows broken and their cars scratched. It's, <laughs> it's all it's all just about it's all just about pushing terror. It's very easy to frighten people. That's been made abundantly clear in the last four years alone. But this is a generational thing. You can always frighten people. But again, that is all they've got. It's just fear porn, fear propaganda. And I, I honestly feel if I if I have there's nothing special about me, and if I've clocked it, and if and, and if my wife and I have realised that you know they, they got a, they all got a bit of a fright because everybody went off peace in 2016, elected Donald Trump on one side of the Atlantic and voted to leave the European Union on the other, 
and they've just had to they've just had to put the foot on the gas and go for it. And we've, we've, we can see it. And, and if it's obvious to someone like me, then it must be pretty bloody obvious. So that's what I've always said. I'm a C student comedian. And if I can see this, I know the people who are smarter than me must be able to see it. And most of them just don't speak up because of uh, cowardice, fear of losing their position in polite society and things like that. And that comes back to COVID. You come see me on tour in Rutherford, New Jersey, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Ontario, California, Las Vegas, Davenport, Iowa, Chicago, Illinois. We're doing a live panel video show, special surprise guests on that show, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets and make sure you go to Jimmy Door because they don't want to buy it from a second reseller. Mm-hmm.